This is an extra video about the order part of the characteristics of life for advanced students, including AP and honor students. And if you're a regular student, you can watch this for fun, but it's not going to be part of your tested uh, stuff. But basically, when you talk about the levels of life or the hierarchy of life in what we call systems biology, that's the study of like how all those parts work together to make the whole, basically. Look, for example, at the dog here. You can basically get this dog and separate it into its constituent parts. And then it doesn't really look like a dog anymore. But then if you put together, you basically make a dog. So the dog doesn't exist until all those parts are put together. But it also couldn't exist with any of those parts. And so what is the dog? Is it, is it the whole or is it the sum of its parts? So systems biology talks about how to integrate the study of all the constituent parts of a certain system to try to understand how it works. When you're studying that, there's two ways that you can t look at things. You can look at things with reductionism or with holism. Within systems biology, you can reduce it to the bare minimum and study how each one of those little parts, what is the job of each part within the whole, and get as close as you can to the source of a certain phenomena. Or you can study the whole put together and see how that works. So for example, if you're trying to understand how the biosphere works on the Earth, will you study the whole biosphere or will you study each of the animals in the biosphere and then connect their, them together to see how it all ties in together? So when you study the way that a cell works, are you going to study the cell or are you going to study each organelle? So you see, you can reduce it to the bare minimal or you can look at it to a whole. And now, depending on how you do it, there's advantages and disadvantages. When you look at things too up close, you, you might miss some of the big picture. But when you look just at the big picture, it's hard to understand it without looking at its parts. So the best thing to do is to look as closely as you can while also considering other close aspects to see how they fit together to make the whole. That is systems biology. And that means that when you're studying biology, it's very important to, to choose your level of analysis. If I want to find out how a watch works, I have to look at the watch as a whole, but I have to understand each of the constituent parts of that and get into closer and closer to the detail so I can understand exactly what's causing things to happen. And as I look at different levels of detail, I will see different things showing up. For example, uh, if I ask you, why is there so much oxygen in our, at in our biosphere? That could be answered from a variety of perspectives. A holistic view would actually obviously realize that the atmosphere is 21% made of oxygen, and, but there's something to do with life that made that happen, right? If you come closer and study the biome aspect of it, you will see that the majority of that oxygen is produced in the oceans, in the open ocean biomes. And there's also a, a, a really concentrated production in the rainforest and, on, and other places like the, the coastal oceans. But that the majority still comes from the open ocean just because it's the algae that are living there which are doing that. And the algae, uh, the most common place for the algae to live is in the open ocean. But... At the same time, there's more concentrated amount of production of oxygen in the rainforest. So now I'm looking at it as a biome level. But that, those biomes are made up of smaller ecosystems where, which have things like nutrients, the amount of carbon dioxide, sunlight. All of these are aspects which will determine how much productivity is actually being made. Remember, though, that some of that oxygen is consumed by the living things which are living in that ecosystem. So now you start talking about relationships that exist within that ecosystem. But then you have to realize that those relationships exist within communities where plants are producers and are consumers like herbivores and carnivores are all eating and consuming the oxygen that's being produced by these plants. But I can also look at it closer and study the population of plants and seeing the effect of their primary productivity and how much oxygen they're putting it out. I can also look at it species-wise to understand how each species of plants perform a photosynthesis. I can look at the structures of the organism, the roots, the leaves. Now I started looking at more like the organism and the organ systems. But I can also look at each organ. I can look at the leaf and dissect, dissect the leaf and see where the photosynthesis is taking place. Then I can get closer and look at the actual tissue, the cells, the group of cells that perform photosynthesis and see how they do it. Then I can look inside each mesophyll cell that performs photosynthesis and see how they're performing the photosynthesis. Then I can actually look inside those mesophyll cells and see that there are organelles where the photosynthesis happen and see that those chloroplasts are, if, are very important for life. But then I can see that those chloroplasts are all built of, of macromolecules, which are all acting in tandem. And, and I can start studying the biochemistry of it and how simple molecules work together with complex molecules to transfer the energy from the light to the glucose at the end of the thing. 
but then to understand how those, those molecules are doing that, I have to understand chemistry. And to understand that chemistry, I have to look at the simple molecules that make up the bigger molecules. But then to understand those simple molecules, I have to understand atoms and subatomic particles. And for that, I need to understand physics. So you see, you can dissect the whole of why there's oxygen in the atmosphere by answering questions about looking at each of the levels of organization where life presents itself. And depending on the level that you choose, you may miss a picture of the whole. Or if you focus too much on the whole, you might never really understand what builds it. So there's limits to both sides. And in systems biology, you're going to try to integrate as much as possible. Another aspect of this uh, topic is the idea that certain characteristics of life or of the con concepts that you're trying to understand will emerge at a certain level of analysis, but they would not exist if you look under that. For example, uh, subatomic particles don't have properties which are maintained individually all the electrons are all the same but atoms are different from each other so atoms is the basic unit of matter where differences can still be seen among the particles and so see that's an emergent property differences in matter emerge at the atomic level what about life where does that emerge life emerges at the cell type because nothing smaller than a cell can be considered a life and so you see that living things are emerge at the cellular level. What about evolution? Where would that emerge? That property emerges once you start looking at populations because an organism does not evolve, it is the population that evolves. And so evolution is an emergent property at the population level. You know, Where would you see symbiosis emerging? That has to be a community level because it is a com symbiosis is a relationship that exists between two organisms. So that means that it would take two for you to have that emergent property. So the idea of emergent property is that depending on the level that you're analyzing, you will see new things show up. In the example that you hear, you see that um, on the left side, you see that an organism is a function of all its basic parts. So a fish, the, all the fish behaviors are emergent properties of all of its systems combined. So it only emerges at the organism level. But if you think about you know, a neural response, that's an emergent property of its nervous system. So do you see what I'm saying? In biology, when you're looking at systems biology, depending on which level you analyze, you may see a new property or not, which is why you have to choose your level analysis carefully and consider the whole together with its parts.